And uh, we have Chris here, who's a senior software engineer at uh, Silicon Labs. He's also an instructor. So uh, make sure you take notes, because if you want lunch, you got to pass the quiz at the end of the talk. That's right. Thank you, Paul. So uh, as Paul said, my name is Chris Morrow. Um, I am here to talk to you today about a Python package I developed called Sci Analysis. So a little bit about me, I am a software developer at Silicon Labs. Um, there's how you can get hold of me uh, if you have questions afterwards. And then um, just a quick show of hands, who here has worked with data in any capacity? <laughs> Even if uh, it's not in Python. Okay, so quite a few people here. Okay, so usually working with data, at some point you need to analyze that data, right? And if that's the case, then I think Psi Analysis might be able to help you out there. So what is Psi Analysis? It is a Python package I developed for quickly and easily performing data analysis. And it is a high level wrapper around um, part of the, the PyData stack, such as pandas, uh, SciPy, and Matplotlib. And so you might be thinking, you know, these tools are great. Why do we need one more, right? Um, and I think really what differentiates Sci Analysis from these tools is that they are very general focused, whereas uh, Sci Analysis is very focused in terms of the analysis types it performs. Um, it exposes a single function called analyze that you use to, to do uh, all the analysis. Um, also, part of my motivation for creating this was to tackle three problems that I incurred and probably other people have incurred when working with the, the PyData stack. So um, these analysis types that Sci Analysis currently handles is um, the distribution analysis of continuous uh, numeric data. It can also provide a bar chart and frequency analysis of categorical data, as well as bivariate or uh, correlation between uh, two numeric vectors. And then lastly, location testing and um, um, distribution between uh, different groups of numeric data. Okay, so those problems I mentioned. Um, problem one. When I learned Python, it was initially to do data analysis based off of the recommendation of some friends. Um, so the first thing I did was I went out and I bought the Wes McKinney um, Python for data analysis book. And um, I was coming from working in Scala. Uh, and so Python was actually a breath of fresh air in that sense. but. Um, you know, working with pandas and matplotlib was, was tricky at first. And so I found myself referring back to the book quite a bit. So um, one thing that I wanted to accomplish here was um, I provide the analyze function, which is a single entry point into performing data analysis here. It is handling, um, or rather abstracting away a lot of the functions that are being called by SciPy and matplotlib um, and taking care of that for you so you don't have to remember or constantly go back to and refer to these functions. So um, let's take a look at what that looks like up here. Um, so I would mentioned these four different analysis types. Uh, for performing uh, or just looking at the distribution of uh, an array of, of numbers. Um, you just pass that into the analyze function, pretty easy. Now if you are passing in an array of uh, strings, it will perform a frequency analysis for you. And then um, now with location testing, this is where it gets a little tricky, uh, depending on how your data is shaped. Um, if, let's say for instance, you have individual columns in a pandas data frame that you pass in, you could pass these in as a list or as a dictionary. 
to perform some kind of or sorry analysis between these groups, uh, or if you're working with stacked stacked data, and what I mean there is you have a separate column that identifies the groups, then you just pass in the column of that data frame and then specify the groups. Uh, and then lastly, um, if we want to perform a bi bivariate or correlation analysis, then we just pass both, um, both those arrays in. So I know this is kind of high level right now. I'm going to go into more detail and show you some examples here in a bit. Um, so now just one simple example here is um, what I did is I create a NumPy array of normally distributed random variables and then just pass that into the analyze function. And what Psi Analysis gives me is a graph of the histogram. I get a box plot and then optionally I told it to give me a cumulative distribution function here as well. And uh, for each graph I get, I also get summary stats and it also tells me whether my data is normally distributed or not, right? So there's a little bit of input up there, but everything else is what you get whenever you use the analyze function. Okay, so let's move on to problem two. So unless you have a background in statistics, um, it's often difficult to know which hypothesis test you should use in certain cases. Um, I mean, even for s statisticians, this sometimes gets tricky and, uh, you know, we like to argue over this quite often. So, uh, Psi Analysis is going to try to take care of that by, it, by choosing the most appropriate test given the data that you've supplied. So, as an example, let's take a look at what that looks like. So, this is the uh, decision tree for performing the location testing. First thing it's going to do is see, did you provide it, uh, more than two groups of data analyzed? And if so, it's gonna perform a one-way ANOVA if that data is normally distributed. Otherwise, it's gonna perform a non-parametric call wallace test. And then if you're using two groups, and both are normally distributed, it will perform a t-test. Otherwise, it goes down to Mann-Whitney u-test, and then if you have less than 20 samples in that data, then you're down to um, the, the least sensitive test, which is the, the KS2 sample test. All right, so problem three. Um, working with missing data is tricky. And so in this example here, I am using matplotlib to graph two lists. Um, each list is just um, values ranging from one to five, with the exception that one of them has the value three missing in it. So how matplotlib handles this is when it encounters that missing value, you just get um, a missing segment in, uh, in the line there. Uh, now, in the case of, now let's say we wanted to try to do a best line fit on that, and we have a missing value. I pass that to the NumPy polyfit function, and it just gives me a value error, right? So, Psi Analysis can pretty seamlessly take care of this. I pass in the exact same lists to the analyze function, and it knows that there is a missing value in one of the lists and then drops the value in, at the same index in the corresponding array. So you can see here um, where it's pointing out the linear regression, uh, n is equal to four there uh, because it did drop the corresponding value. All right, so um, I'm gonna stop talking about <laughs> Uh, some of the motivation and purpose there. And I want to show you some actual examples. Um, so what I've done is I want to try to answer the question, which city has the best weather out of Austin, Denver, 
Las Vegas, New York, and Seattle. And what I've done is I've put together a, a notebook that if you want to follow along, um, the notebook you can find on my GitHub. Uh, so it's github.com slash, oops, uh, sure, okay, yeah, that's it right there. <laughs> um, uh, slash PyTexas underscore 2019. And um, you can view it there or you can clone the repo and work with it in a Jupyter notebook if you prefer. Alternatively, you can also um, open the notebook in Google Colab or Binder. Any, anybody here use Google Colab? A few hands? Yeah, I think it's good stuff. What about Binder? Anybody use Binder? Okay, okay, one, one, so, okay. Yeah, definitely, uh, if, if you haven't heard of Binder, go check it out, it's, it's good stuff. Okay, so what I've done for this notebook is I pulled a NOAA GSOD data set from Google Cloud. It's stored as a BigQuery table, and uh, let's see, it's a public data set under samples, Dot gsod there's a couple of them out there so I wanted to specify which one I'm using there also this table 16 gigs so I've limited the analysis to just the years 2005 to 2009 and then also best weather I mean come on that's that's a super subjective thing right so I want to try to quantify that a little bit by adding the constraint that best weather is going to be the city with the maximum number of good weather days minus bad weather days. So again, still, good weather. How do we define that? So I'm going to take a stab at it and say that it is the average days per year where the temperature is between 60 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit plus the average number of days per year where the dew point is between 40 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit, divided by two, all right? So we're gonna codify that into a, a function in our notebook. All right, so first thing is um, there's no cities in this data set, which I'll show in a minute. Um, instead, it lists all the data by the WBAN weather station that collected the data. So um, first thing it did is write a function here that is going to set the city by the weather station number in the data set, all right? And next, it's, it's always a good idea when doing EDA to at least do some sanity checks up front. Um, here, I'm looking at the data frame and um, I can see that I have 9,081 columns, or, sorry, rows. And then um, here I'm just listing the, the column values, or sorry, column names. Uh, and then I wanna look at the data types of these columns to see what I'm working with. And here I can see I have a column for year, month, and day that are integers. Uh, I have a mean temperature column, which that's going to be useful. Also have mean dew point, which I can use for determining good weather. Um, a little bit further down, I see I have a maximum temperature column too. So I have two different temperature columns, so I might want to see which one of those to use. And uh, then I have several Boolean columns for fog, rain, snow, hail, thunder, and tornadoes, which I'm going to use to build up my, my bad weather list. All right. So first things first, I use the analyze function on the city column to make sure I have equal numbers of data per city. So what I can see up there is that each city makes up about 20% of the data, which is great. Uh, now let's repeat this process for year and month to make sure that those are close to equal as well. So again here, for the years 2005 through 2009, have roughly the same amount of data. 
So far, so good. Um, here, month, uh, looking at the months, there's some variation there by you know number of days per month, which we would expect. But again, this is looking good so far. So now let's, uh, now I'd mentioned there was two different temperature columns, right? So let's see which one um, we might want to use here. So one of them is called mean temp. The other is called max temperature, right? So max temperature would make me think those values are higher. So it's a good thing that I didn't make that assumption because looking at it here, I can actually see that max temperature has a lower mean by like 10 degrees on here. Um, now, this is something that I might have missed had I not plopped this data into Psy Analysis and saw this real quickly. Um, now, since max temperature I, looks like a liar and I have a mean dew point column, I'm, I'm going to stick with mean temp for the rest of the analysis here. All right. So uh, now we're just looking at the general distribution of mean temp here. Um, then we can also uh, now group mean temp by city and look at it that way as well. Uh, we can see that Austin and Las Vegas have higher average temperatures, which we would expect. And now we can repeat the process for dew point by looking at the overall distribution of the dew point and then again by city here. Okay, so now there is actually a relationship between temperature and dew point, or at least so I'm told according to Wikipedia. Um, so let's look at that correlation and what we see is there, there appears to be a pretty good correlation there, uh, but our best fit line um, doesn't look great. And we have all these kind of low flyers on there. Um, so we can drill down into this a little bit more and kind of see what's going on. Um, I can do, repeat this exact same analysis, but here I'm passing in groups is equal to our city column. And it's uh, because the, the colors are a little tough to see there. Um, it's Las Vegas has a lot of those, those low flyer points on there. So what I might want to do here is because Las Vegas and Denver are both a little bit lower, um, I can compare both of those individually to New York, which actually has the highest correlation coefficient here. Okay, so here the red is New York, the blue is Las Vegas, and we can see there's there's actually a pretty big difference there. Um, I think this is attributed to uh, differences in relative humidity since Las Vegas is, is in the desert after all um, and does have a uh, lower relative humidity um, throughout most of the year. And, you know, a similar thing for Denver here as well, I can kind of see. Um, and there it's not so much, I mean, Denver's definitely not the desert, but it is at higher altitude. So I think that is what kind of explains the data there. So now we're getting close to wrapping up. Um, I create a function to define my bad weather, which is if any of the columns, rain, fog, snow, hail, thunder, tornado are true, then I mark that as bad weather for that day. I also have functions for um, determining the, the, the temperate climate, um, which is between 60 and 80 degrees, and then also kind of the the comfortable humidity level uh, between 40 and 60 degrees and apply those to the data frame. And then I finally summarize all this um, by grouping by city and year. And so since I'm looking at five years worth of data, uh, what I do is I get the total count 
per sitting per year throughout all that and then next is to average that uh, across the five years by city and then finally apply our best weather formula there so anybody want to guess which city actually has the best weather just go ahead and yell it out Vegas. okay I hear Vegas any other guesses I heard Seattle, Austin, okay. So San Diego, honestly, San Diego probably is true, but it's not in, uh, <laughs> in here. So that, that was kind of on purpose. Uh, okay, so um, the answer, according to our data here, is Seattle. <laughs> I, I was shocked too, actually. Um, <laughs> it turns out if, if I had used max temperature, then the answer is Austin. Um, but here really what, what's doing it for Seattle is the, the dew point. Um, and uh, I mean, now Seattle does have the most bad weather days, but I guess it has so many days where the humidity is between 16, or sorry, 40 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit that um, it edges out Austin here by a little bit. So um, that's actually all I have. This is just the highlights of the, the notebook. Um, again, if you would like to play around with the data in the notebook, I encourage you to do that to learn more about how to use sign analysis. Um, and thank you. So we have a little bit of time for questions. Uh, does anyone have a question? Just raise your hand and I'll run out to you. Just out of curiosity, is this your first package that you written? Yes, it, it is actually. Thank you. Just along those lines, approximately how long have you been working on this? Okay, so the question is how long I've been working on this? Um, a, a while, actually. <laughs> um, so it's, I think I, I started in 2015. Um, back then it was just a single module of several functions. And it's gone through a, a few refactors already. So now it's actually object oriented. Um, the code's still not as clean as I, like it to be um, so definitely if you want to check out my github and look at it you can you can see my trash there to <laughs> quote the, the keynote um, and so it's I've been look, working on it a little bit you know over the years here and there between work and video games and teaching so um, yeah um, I'm it's still a work in progress there's still more stuff that I want to add um, in there so yeah, so um, it's pretty great, but uh, I guess my main question is with that single entry point through the analyze function, um, there's no way to, how do you choose what you're looking for if you know what you're looking for? You know, I want this type of analysis versus another, it just depends on what you give it, or I guess that'd be explained in the talks or something. So, so that's a great question, uh, and it's something that I've been thinking about a lot um, is Behind the scenes, there is kind of an API for performing different analysis types. And the analyze function is basically just the logic for choosing which one to use. So I've been thinking about creating the docs for that so you can go and use the, the, the one you specifically want. But now kind of what I'm toying around with is actually creating uh, preferences. And so you could optionally create a serialized preference file to disk that it can read from that or alternatively you could pass in some arguments to kind of set your preferences for the rest of the session. Um, so then that way like say you don't you don't want to use the cruise call wallace test you have something against that then you can set the preference for the test you want to use and it will just always use that one every time. You answered this question. Oh. 
Great. Any other questions? You said you're still working with this. What's coming in next? Tell us about the future, if you can. Oh, that's a great question. So I'm currently uh, squishing bugs, but also, um, so I showed that I can do some analysis of categorical data. That is the next big expansion. Um, so one feature I've been working on for a while now is actually grouping, um, being able to do grouped categorical analysis. Um, and then also some support in there for sampling. So um, that might enable analyzing polling data, for example. Um, that's something that I've really been interested in. Um, also, um, the other two big features are gonna be uh, being able to create like a heat map or a um, matrix plot of multiple numeric um, um, pieces of data and then also time series analysis. That's, that's a big one that I'm pretty excited for um, and to get started on. But that's, that I think is going to take me a while to get all the way through that. Any other questions? Okay, let's give a round of applause.